Welcome to the Root of Power podcast, where I teach you how to chase your joy, find alignment, and create a life and a business that you love using actionable methods, interviews, and inspiring stories from people who know that true freedom is found within. I'm your host, your always hype woman and sometimes ass kicker, Amanda Chills, and I am so proud of you for choosing to step into your power. Come along, we've got dreams to build. Okay, my love, I have put everything that I offer for free on one page so that we are not doing more work than we have to because why would we do that? Hashtag work smarter, not harder. So livemyhappyhealth.com slash free. You are going to find everything I've created for not only leveling up in your personal life and building a life that you love, but leveling up in your business life and building a business that you love. Okay livemyhappyhealth.com slash free. Love you. Hi. Welcome to this week's episode. Oh, Kitty doesn't want to hang out anymore. I suppose he just hopped down. So I thought right now we would talk about self-trust and how it's pretty foundational to anything. Now, most clients almost all of the clients who come to me, um, outside of clients who tend to be entrepreneurs, like running a business takes such a high amount of self-trust that typically these people have had more practice. And so they're just better at it. But the vast majority of my clients struggle with self-trust. And you may be like, Amanda, what do you mean by self-trust? I literally mean what the words say. The ability to trust yourself that you know the answer, that you'll follow through, that you'll do the right thing, right being whatever is right for you, not like right moral is in bad wrong, um, that you can handle things, that you can do things, that you can withstand storms. Like all of those things come down to self-trust. <sighs> Sorry, we're on recording podcast episode number three, which means Manon can be a little tired, but here we are. Why? Because I told myself I would record four and I trust myself to follow through with that. Uh, I love it when a thing works out. Um, so self-trust becomes the foundation for a lot of things. And a lot of people, when they first come as clients, are not very good at it. They typically don't follow through with their word. They allow other people to not follow through with their word to them. They struggle with um, building habits. They struggle with building systems. They just be struggling, okay? That's part of the reason people come to come to work with me and with the team is they're like, uh, life is a shit show. We're struggling. We hate this. Obviously, it's not a good time. <laughs> so one of the things that we work on throughout our work together is learning how to build self-trust. Now, if you have a good therapist, what they're going to do is turn every answer back on you. A lot of people think therapists give advice and then you do what they say, you get the results and bing, bang, bada, boom, you are happy, life is good. That is not what a good therapist does. A good therapist should not be giving you advice. That is not our role. Why? Because I'm not the one who lives with the consequences. You are. So I can't tell you what to do because I'm not paying the cost. I don't have to pay what it will cost to make a decision. So advice is not useful and it is not what a good therapist should be doing. Now, are there times where I will give a client a very clear answer to a question? 100%. If a client is in an abusive relationship, I am absolutely encouraging them to leave. I am absolutely doing that at the right time in the right way. The first time they meet me is not the time. So there's a lot of nuance to that. But the reason I say I never give advice, no one on my team gives advice, a good therapist should not be doing that is because one, we don't live with the consequences of your choices, you do. And two, it doesn't build self-trust, right? A lot of our clients come, a lot of my clients come because they have been taught that they can't trust themselves. They don't know the answer. They're stupid. They can't make decisions. They're bad at making decisions. They always make the wrong decision. Like so many of my clients come with that belief which obviously promotes a lack of self-trust. So then outsourcing their decisions to me doesn't help them. That puts them energetically in a space underneath me, below me, 
which is not where I want them to be. Where I want them to be is above me. I'm not the ultimate authority on you or your life. You are. I'm not the ultimate authority on any decisions that you make. You are, because you're the person who has to live with them. You're the person who has to make these choices. So this goes both for therapy clients and for business coaching clients. Like, I'm not making decisions about your business. You are. I'm helping you explore options, process options, talk through them, see which one feels good, what the consequences are to any of your decisions, because every decision has a trade-off, every decision has consequences, but you are the ultimate person making decisions on your business. Likewise, you are the ultimate person making decisions on your life. We talk about options, process them. What are the costs to each of these options? What do I get if I choose these options? All of those things. But I'm not telling you what to do at zero point. Am I telling you what to do? I may recommend, hey, what if we did this over this? What if we found a partner who wasn't abusive and was supportive instead of what we currently have? What if we did, you know, this particular launch plan versus this kind of launch plan? What if you we held off on this product and we did this product first? Like that's a recommendation, that's a suggestion, but none of my clients ever have to do what I say because again. It's their life. It's their business. So self-trust, what a coach, what a therapist, what a mentor should be doing back to you is saying, what's your decision here? What do you want to do? What will you follow through with? What plan are you going to make? Because that's going to build self-trust, which builds self-confidence, which gives your brain a ton of evidence that not only can you keep your word, can you follow through with the things you're going to follow through on? Can you handle whatever comes your way, but that when you get off track, because you inevitably will, nobody's perfect. Like when you get off track, your brain is going to have all this evidence that the majority of the time you're actually on track, you're doing the things that you say you're going to do. You're following through. You can trust yourself to make a decision, make a claim, and then follow through with that. And that makes everything else easier because if you know that you always have the answers, if you know that you always make a good decision, and you do, given your resources, your your energy available and your knowledge at the time, like you always make a good decision. You may not love the decisions five years, 10 years later, but that may actually be a good thing because that means that you've grown, right? If you don't cringe at your past self, like you probably haven't grown very much. You should be like, oh, fuck, she did what? But that's because you've grown now and you have more knowledge, more experience, um, more wisdom. So if we trust that we always make the best decision possible at the time, then there's never really any worry. And if we trust that we can get ourselves out of a situation that's not working for us and just make a more aligned decision, then there's really no worry. So a ton of that anxiety, that worry, that fear goes away because you trust yourself enough to not only figure it out, to have the answer, but then to follow through with whatever plan that you make. So a lot of people will interact with me and they'll be like, oh my God, you're so confident, which if you listen to the last episode, part of that is because I'm absolutely delusional about my abilities and my capabilities. And two is because I have a very high level of self-trust. I do what I say I'm gonna do. I have a lot of integrity, meaning I do what I say I'm going to do the vast majority of the time in most areas, right? But I can also tell you where I struggle with that. I struggle with that with like going to the gym in the morning. I make the intention every night to go to the gym between like 5.30 and 6 a.m. And probably I hit it about half and half. So that's an area where like I need some integrity, where I need some more self-trust because sometimes I don't make it. And that means that my self-trust is declining because I said I was going to do a thing and then I don't do the thing. But in business, in personal relationships, like there's a very high level of self-trust. I know I will never in my life get myself into a situation like I was in with my ex-husband. I know that I won't have or keep a partner who's out of alignment. I know that if I tell a friend I'm going to do something, I'm going to follow through on that. So there's a high level of self-trust there, which also makes me more trustworthy because think about how much you trust someone who doesn't keep their own word and doesn't keep like for themselves and then doesn't keep their word if they tell you they're going to do something, right? Like you don't trust that person. So don't be that person for yourself is what I'm saying. So one of the beautiful things about self-trust is it promotes self-confidence. So if you're someone who struggles with self-confidence, I would guess that you struggle to follow through with yourself on promises that you make, on intentions that you set, which is not a great thing, but is a very simple thing to fix. Essentially, it's 
Keep the promises you make to yourself. Make sure those promises are realistic, right? Don't, it's like people who like want to lose weight and they're like, I'm going to, I'm going to do P90X and I'm going to do um, CrossFit three times a day and I'm going to follow a meal plan exactly. And they've never done any of those things in their life. They've never picked up a barbell. They've never worked out. Like that's a completely unrealistic promise. So one, we need to make sure that we're making realistic promises. Like maybe you start off walking 20 minutes a day. Like my sister and I are going to Italy in a few weeks and she messaged me today and said, Hey, I have a plan to go to the gym and walk on the treadmill for like, you know, half an hour or whatever, a few times a week at a a little bit of an incline. So I can start, you know, like prepping for walking as much as we're going to be walking in Italy. And I was like, Oh my God, talk dirty to me. Like that is what talk dirty to me. Yes, bitch. Like we love that. So when she follows through with that, she's going to start building self trust. She's going to start knowing that if she can handle these small promises to herself, she can handle bigger promises to herself. So once you have that foundation of saying, oh, well, I do these little things and I keep those promises, you're going to naturally grow that skill, right? Any skill that you start practicing, you naturally get better at. Self-trust is just a skill as well. So I want you to think about like, if you are someone who struggles with self-confidence, if you're like, well, I'll follow through on things for other people, but I never follow through on things for me. One, you're probably a people pleaser. Um, I have a whole course literally made for you called Boundaries Baddie. It will change your fucking life. It will change your life forever. So if that's something you're struggling with, please check out Boundaries Baddie. You can find that on my website, livemyhappyhealth.com. Um, it is, oh my God, for what you get, it's it's literally, for what you get, it's a no-brainer price. So if you're like, well, I can always keep other people's promises, but I never keep them for myself. Like you probably struggle with people pleasing. Again, that course is literally made for you. But I want you to think about how we can start switching that. Like, how can you start keeping small promises to yourself the majority of the time? Again, no one's perfect, but the majority of the time to start building some of that self-trust. Start small. Start so small you think it's stupid. You're like, oh, of course I can do that. Amazing. Start there. Yes, please. Like, I am not going to start with, let me um, build the Great Wall of China every day. That's a bad analogy. I'm not going to start with, let me, if I want to write a book, right? I don't know why this took so long to get there. But anyway, if I want to write a book, I'm not going to start with, I'm going to write a chapter a day. Oh my God. No, (laughs) no. What I'm going to do is write one sentence. Even though, as I say that out loud, I'm like, that's so dumb. That's where you want to start. Start so small, you think it's silly. Then we can grow. As we get more confidence, what does confidence come from? Repeated action. As we get more confident in our ability to trust ourselves, why? Because we've repeated the action that we said we were going to do, we can then grow that goal. So self-trust allows you to know that you always make a good decision. Maybe not a decision that you would make looking back five years from now, but you don't know now what you would know then, right? So you make the best decision that you can make at the time, given your resources, your information, your energy, like all those things. So that matters. Um, Self-trust allows you to follow through with things. It allows you to get back on track faster. It allows you to tune out noise from other people who are giving you opinions, who are giving you feedback that may not even be useful for you. Because if you trust yourself, you don't need a bunch of other like noise. You don't need other people's opinions or advice because you trust yourself to make a good decision. So you're naturally going to make decisions that are much more in alignment with what you want, which means you're going to spend way less time making decisions that are things you think you should be doing. You're going to spend way less time making decisions that are made out of fear or that you, that someone just told you you should do because that's what they did or that's what they think is best. Like when you have a high level of self-trust, when you follow through with what you say you're going to do, when you make intentional decisions, you're going to make intentional decisions. (laughs) Like they're going to be the best decisions to make. So I want you to think about that. And like, as a encouragement, I would say homework, but like, you don't have to do anything that I say, live your dream. Where can you start building some self-trust? What is one action that you can take consistently? Doesn't have to be daily, but maybe once a week is not enough. 
So somewhere in there that proves to yourself that you do what you say you're going to do. Is that meditating for five minutes, three mornings a week, journaling for three minutes, you know, a few mornings a week, listening to a podcast every morning. Um, Hi, I have a lot of episodes you can binge. Um, Reading for 10 minutes a day. Like again, so small that you think it's silly. So small that you think it's silly. Like a little baby mouse, small. We're like, oh, it's so cute, little baby mouse. Like that small. And then watch yourself bloom, blossom in this self-trust. And then everything gets easier because you're not second guessing yourself every fucking step of the way. It's just such an exhausting way to live. I know because I walk tons of people through this exact process. So great. There you go. Start building self-trust, make everything else easier. You are the ultimate authority in you. Like nobody knows you better. Nobody knows what you need better. Nobody else lives with the consequences of your choices. So trust yourself to make the best decision for you to follow through. But again, that is a practice. So until you start practicing that, you just don't have evidence that it's true for you yet. But once you start practicing it, you'll have a ton of evidence that it's true for you. So I would love to hear your thoughts on this episode. Is this something that you struggle with? Are you like, nah, bitch, I have this in the bag. Um, Let me know. I'm very interested. So holla at your girl. I would love that. At Amanda underscore chills. And I hope that you intentionally choose something to build yourself trust with. Okay. Go have a absolutely beautiful day or night. 